Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make a miniature sofa. I love all things miniature, but I hadn't yet tried miniature upholstery, so I thought I'd start with a comfy two-seater sofa. The total size of the sofa in this video ended up being 20 centimeters wide, 11 centimeters high and 9 centimeters deep, which means that I made it to 1 12th scale. If you don't want to make the exact same sofa that I've made, then feel free to change the measurements or the design. Just note that a more angular sofa design with lots of straight edges is a lot easier to make than something that has lots of curves. Okay, so for this project, you're going to need some fabric. I used a purple woven fabric with a nice texture for the majority of the sofa and a small amount of yellow knit jersey for the little throw cushions. I recommend using a woven material without any stretch, which is thick enough to not be see-through. So your best bet is probably a medium weight fabric. If you want to use a pattern fabric instead of a solid color, make sure the pattern is small scale so that it looks realistic. You'll also need a sharp hand sewing needle and threads that match the fabrics that you've bought. If you have a sewing machine, you can use that to make the mini cushions if you like. In addition, you'll also need some batting and stuffing. I personally use some polyester batting for the majority of the padding in the sofa and I used polyester stuffing for the pillows. Also a metal ruler, a pencil, sharp scissors, an X-Acto knife or craft knife, an awl, an iron and ironing board, something to protect your work surface such as a cutting mat, as well as items to place on top of the sofa sections as the glue dries, such as heavy books. You'll also need some glue. I used an all-purpose white glue, which was Aileen's Tacky Glue, as well as a stronger clear drying glue, which was UHU all-purpose adhesive. I don't personally have any clear drying fabric glue, but if you happen to have some, then that would be the best option. For the core of all of the sofa sections, I used six millimeter or quarter of an inch thick foam board. If you don't have foam board, it is possible to use stiff cardboard instead. For the sofa legs, I wanted them quite thin, so I used bamboo skewers. However, if you want something chunkier or sturdier, you could use wooden dowel instead. You'll also need something to cut the wood with and some sandpaper to smooth the wood. And finally, a couple of optional extras that could come in handy include two lollipop sticks and a small cheap paintbrush or a toothpick. Right, so for the first step, we need to cut out the base pieces for the sofa. If you don't want to use my design for a sofa, then the first thing you need to do is design your own sofa. I personally found the inspiration for my design on a sofa website, but you could always design your own dream sofa or even just replicate the sofa that you've got at home. For my design, you'll need to cut out four pieces of foam board. One will be the base of the sofa, two will be the sides and one will be the back. You'll notice that the sides of the back piece slope outwards and this is because I want the side pieces to be angled. The sizes of the four required pieces are as follows. Two smaller rectangles measuring 5.8 centimeters by seven centimeters. One larger rectangle measuring 14 centimeters by 6.4 centimeters. And finally, one symmetrical trapezoid shape measuring 17 centimeters across the top, 14 centimeters across the bottom, and this needs to be five centimeters high. So you simply take your piece of foam board and measure out and outline all of these shapes using a ruler and a pencil. Once you've done that, use your metal ruler and your X-Acto knife to cut along these straight edges. Make sure to protect your work surface whilst you're doing this, preferably with a cutting mat. And that will give you the four base pieces for your sofa. Next, we're going to take each of these foam board base pieces and wrap one layer of batting around them. Excess batting at each end is needed, a few centimetres or so, 
but when the batting is wrapped as shown, the edges should only just meet rather than overlap. Then when you're ready to secure the batting in place, you add some glue to one side of the foam board, like so. Fold the batting over the long edges so that they meet in the middle and press those edges into the glue. Then put something on top of it to weigh it down whilst the glue dries and then repeat the same steps for the other three pieces. I personally put paint tubes on top of mine to weigh them down. Once the glue is dry, you then need to fold over and glue the ends of the batting. So first, cut down the sides of the excess batting, then cut off the side of the batting where the edges meet. This will leave you with just a single flap of excess batting, as you can see here. Then add glue to the very end of the foam board piece and fold over the flap. Make sure to press that batting into the glue. Do this at both ends of every base piece and then leave them to dry, remembering again to weigh them down. Once the glue is dry, simply take each base piece and use your scissors to cut off the excess batting. When you do this, try to keep your scissors flush to the flat surface so that the resulting pieces are smooth and evenly covered with the batting. You then need to cover each of these pieces with your sofa fabric. In my case, that's the purple fabric. This piece of fabric needs to be big enough to wrap the matching base piece with a little overlap and there should be at least a few centimetres excess at each end as well. Then wrap the fabric pieces around the base pieces as shown so that they overlap by about one centimetre or so right down the middle. You'll probably want the join in the batting to be facing upwards. And that's simply because you'll want that join to be on the bottom of the cushion rather than on the top. Glue those overlapping edges in place making sure that you get no glue on any other parts of the fabric. If you want to avoid gluing completely, then feel free to sew everything together instead. It just takes a bit more effort. Okay, so once those pieces are dry, you can then cut two slits in each side of the excess fabric like so. And this will create flaps, which you should then shorten to a manageable size. Also cut off the excess fabric on the side where the fabric edges meet. This will leave you with one large flap of fabric. Shape this flap by sloping the edges. Then glue the side flaps down before gluing the large flap in place. A bit like wrapping a present. If you have some clear drying fabric glue, then that's what you should use for this step. Do this for each end of each base piece and then leave them to dry. Again, weighing them down. For the next step, we're going to add some back panels to each of these base pieces. This is optional, particularly if the backs of your base pieces are already quite neat, but I think it helps to give a finished look to the sections of the sofa. So for each of the base pieces, you'll need to cut out a piece of sofa fabric that's the same size. Then iron the edges of these pieces over to the back of the fabric by no more than five millimeters, like so. In order to be able to fold these edges over nice and neatly, we need to remove some bulk in the corners. So simply cut straight across each corner to remove some excess fabric. Make sure that these cuts stay outside of the ironed lines. Then use some stronger clear drying glue ideally fabric glue if you have it, to glue these folded over edges onto the back of the matching base pieces. 
This can get messy, so have tissues handy and try not to get glue elsewhere on the fabric. Do the same for all the base pieces and then leave them to dry. The next step is to add legs to the underside of the large rectangular base piece. You can be as creative as you like with the sofa legs and there's all sorts of materials you can use. I cut four legs out of one wooden skewer. To do this I put the skewer on top of a scrap piece of wood and then used a flat hand saw to cut out those pieces. Each leg was about one and a half centimetres long. I then sanded the ends of the legs smooth using a sandpaper block. Make sure that you don't breathe in any of that wood dust. As a side note, if you'd like to stain the wooden legs, you can paint them with watered down acrylic paint, or you could even use a marker pen to add some colour. Then to attach them, I made four holes in the bottom of the sofa base. To make the holes, I very carefully used an awl. I put my hand on the other side of the piece to make sure that I didn't go all the way through the foam board. Push and twist the awl very carefully and slowly. Then I used the thinner end of my scissors to make the hole big enough for the legs. There are all sorts of tools you could use for this, from knitting needles to pens. You don't have to use exactly what I used. Then just add a dot of strong glue to the top of each leg and push them into the holes. Make sure that the sofa base sits level and then leave it to dry. I noticed that the fabric on the underside of my sofa base was sagging a little bit and not lying straight. So at this point I decided to glue a couple of lollipop sticks onto the bottom using my strong glue and that really helped. Right, so the next step is to cut out the sofa cushions. For the seat cushions, I cut out two pieces of foam board, each measuring five centimeters by six and a half centimeters. And for the back cushions, I cut out two mirror image pieces, each five centimeters high, seven and a half centimeters across the top, six and a half centimeters across the bottom, and a curved cutout section starting two and a half centimeters from the top. This curved section doesn't need to be exact. Once you've cut all of those out, you need to add three holes using your awl to each of the back cushions. So first, use your pencil and ruler to draw a line two centimeters from the top of each of these pieces. Then add pencil marks 1.75 centimeters 3.75 centimeters and 5.75 centimeters from the non-curved edge. Then simply make a hole in the foam board at each of these points. Make sure you hold the awl nice and straight and push it all the way through the foam board. Next, you need to use the same method as you use for the base pieces to add batting around each cushion piece. So cut out a rectangle of batting for each of the cushion pieces, then fold over the long edges and glue them in place. Once they're dry, again use the same method as you use for the base pieces to leave one flap of batting at each end of the foam board pieces. Fold these flaps over onto the side with the join in the batting and then glue them in place. On the curved edges make sure that the batting follows the line of the curve. 
Then leave these to dry. You'll then want to glue two extra layers of batting onto one side of each rectangular piece. This is just to add more padding to the seat cushions. Then leave these to dry. You'll then want to wrap sofa fabric around these four cushion pieces. Again, with a small overlap. Glue the fabric edges in place and then leave to dry. Remember that the sofa fabric needs to be right side down and also you'll need to place the two rectangular pieces upside down on top of the fabric so that the double layer of extra batting is underneath the foam board. This is so the finished cushions will have the extra padding at the top. And then once again, leave them to dry. Once the glue dries, you'll need to cut to the excess fabric as shown. So cut down each side twice to create two narrow flaps. Shorten these and then cut off the excess on the side where the fabric joins. Shape the large flap that remains and glue it down. Make sure that when you're doing this on the curved edges, that you make the sofa fabric follow those curves. Then I split the larger flap of fabric into two sections. And once that's all glued down, you can see the shape of that edge. Once you've done this for every cushion piece, then leave them to dry. Now we're going to add the tufting effect to the back seat cushions. To do this, you need to cut out a piece of thread and feed the two ends into a needle. This will give you a loop of thread at the end. Then bring the needle through the back seat cushion from the back to the front coming through one of the holes we cut into the foam board earlier. Make sure that you don't pull the thread the whole way through, but instead push the needle back through the cushion from front to back, going through the same hole in the foam board. At the back, take the needle through the loop of thread which will be there and pull tight. Then secure the thread by going into and out of the fabric to make a very small stitch. Pulling the thread until you can just see a small loop. Taking the needle through that loop twice and pulling tight. Then cut off the excess thread. You'll need to do this for each of the three holes in each of the cushions. And then you can add the back panels to all four cushion pieces using the same method as we used for the base pieces. So you cut out a piece of sofa fabric the same size as the cushions. Then iron the edges over to the back. Cut off the excess fabric at the corners. And then glue the panels onto the back of the cushions. Then it's time to assemble the sofa. First, use strong glue to attach the edges of the longer space pieces together. Try to keep the glue contained. We want to see as little as possible on the finished sofa. 
As you can see, I have some glue visible from the back of the sofa along this seam. However, once this glue is dry, I'm going to use invisible stitch along the outside of this seam to hide the glue and join up the fabric edges neatly. So once the glue is dried, you need to cut out a piece of thread and once again put the ends of the thread through the needle. You need to take the needle up through one end of the seam to make a small stitch and then take the needle through the loop of thread at the end and pull tight. I then do invisible stitch or ladder stitch all the way along the seam. If you would like to see a slower demonstration of this method, then I've got a separate video all about this stitch. But basically you go into one side of the seam and do a small horizontal stitch. Then go straight across into the other side of the seam and again do another horizontal stitch. And so on all the way along. Every inch or so you should pull on the thread parallel to the seam in order to tighten the stitches. This will bring the edges of the fabric together and hide the glue. Once you get to the end of the seam, you simply secure the thread as we have done previously. Then cut off the excess thread. You'll then likely need to use some string or some yarn to hold the sofa into the correct position. Then use your strong glue again to add the side pieces to the sofa. Again, once the glue had dried, I used invisible stitch along the seam line on the outside of the sofa. This might seem like a time consuming step, but it really neatens up the finish. It will also make the sofa more durable. And finally, it's time to make the extra little cushions. In my case, that's two throw cushions and two side cushions. In order to make the throw cushions, you need to cut out four pieces of a different fabric, each measuring five centimeters by five centimeters. I used some mustard yellow knit jersey. Place two of these squares of fabric right sides together and sew around three of the sides, making sure to secure the thread at each end. You can stitch these by hand using back stitch or you can use your sewing machine. So secure the beginning of the thread and go into and out of the fabric through both layers. Then you go back one step to where the last stitch finishes and go through the fabric here. Then go forward two steps and come up through the fabric. And you just repeat this over and over. If you'd like a slower demonstration of the back stitch, you can always see my separate video all about this subject. And when you've sewn along three of the edges, you secure the end of the thread. Then turn the cushion right sides out and fill the cushion with a little bit of stuffing. You then need to fold the fabric edges each side of the opening inwards and close this opening using the invisible stitch. And that's one finished cushion. Then repeat these steps to make the other cushion. For the side cushions on the sofa, I used the same method, but I started with four pieces of sofa fabric, each measuring five and a half centimeters by four centimeters. After these cushions had been stuffed and sewn up, I then added a couple of stitches to each one to add the tufted effect. And then you just arrange these cushions on your sofa and that's it, your miniature sofa is now complete. And here are some more photos of the finished sofa.
I really hope you've enjoyed this project and thank you very much for watching.